Hello. While we were at Malice, we had the pleasure of in interviewing a few authors that we met along the way. Some are old friends and some are new friends. Enjoy. We are here with Lynn McPherson, and she is one of the authors at Malice this year. Welcome, Lynn. Thank you so much, Anne. And Tracy, thanks, thanks for having me. And this is not your first Malice? This is not. I came last year to kind of check the lay of the land. So, but this is my first year participating on a panel. Oh, okay. and how was that? It was really fun. Really <laughs> fun. We had a really funny moderator, Ed Amar. Yeah, so it, it was really, really great. And tell us a little bit about the series you write. As of now, I have three books out. They're historical mysteries that take place in the 1950s, kind of a I Love Lucy meets Murder, She Wrote. I've just recently signed two contracts, one with Level Best. So I have a, it's a, a social media influencer who crowdsources for clues and that Ooh. comes out in 2024. And then um, another book with Crooked Lane and that is a bed and breakfast mystery. And, uh, but both series are millennial cozies. Do you write them all at once or do you no. have to finish one and then start another? I would have different characters in different books. <laughs> well, no, it's kind of funny. I had planned on writing two separate series, but I was querying for an agent and it wasn't really going well. So I started a new series. And then in the end, I, I got an agent with the first one. So she took the other one and sold them both. So, oh, very good. Nice. Yeah. So nice. I, I'm editing one while I'm writing the other first draft. So I try to stay in different stages, I guess. That very is good. awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for stopping well, by. Well, thank you so much for having me. And we wish you all the best with writing. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And so. our next victim. <laughs> we are here with Marilyn Levinson who writes under the name of Alison Brooke, and she is a cozy writer. And is this your first malice? No, I think I've been to 10 at least. Oh, wow. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your cozy series. Okay, um, the series I'm writing now is called Haunted Library Series, Ooh. and it takes place in Clover Ridge, Connecticut which is a made up town, but based on a real town that I drove through once and love. <laughs> and of course I created it. I built things around it mm -hmm. that are my own creation. The center of the town is built around the green and the library is on sort of the corner of the green. And that's where my sleuth works. She's the head of programs and events and her name is Carrie Singleton. There is a ghost in the library whom Carrie, she's the only person aside from her young cousin who can see and communicate with Evelyn Havers. Oh. Yeah. And she helps Carrie solve mysteries most of the time. If the suspect might be a relative of hers, she was, is not that helpful, but she flits in and out and she's sort of a mentor of Carrie's as well. And there's a a uh, library cat, Smokey Joe, and he, he really belongs to Carrie, but she brings him to work every day. Oh, oh, nice. And how many books are in the series? Well, okay, the sixth book came out this this fall. It's called Dewey Decimated. And <laughs> okay. yeah. I love and, the puns. <laughs> and the next book is coming out in October. It's called Overdue or Die. You see, they're all, yeah. all the names oh, are, yeah. the names the are all related to libraries, but mm -hmm. they don't necessarily have anything to do with the story. <laughs> <laughs> and I am writing the eighth book now, which will come out the following year. And as I told my agent and my editor, this is the last book because the story arc has been completed. Oh. Um, okay. The, I'm very interested in my characters and in their development, especially my main character. She's not from Clover Ridge, but her family has a farm there that she visited during the summer, her father's family. She comes from a dysfunctional family and she doesn't really feel as if she has a home. And when she's at a very low point, which is about, she's 29, her mother and her new husband, her mother says, oh, I'm too busy. Her mother was never very maternal and her father was a thief. She sort of goes from town to town, you know, she works, of course. She ends up 
going to Clover Ridge and stays with her great aunt and uncle. She's ready to leave the very, very beginning. That's how the book opens, book Death Overdue, the first book. And she's ready to leave because she's working in the library, but doing very low level uh, jobs. And she does have a library degree, which is how she gets to get oh, a okay. real job okay. in the library, finally. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Well, Marilyn, thank you so much for stopping by and talking with us. And we wish you all the best in your writing. And we look forward to seeing you for many years at Malice. <laughs> well, thank you. And thank you so much for interviewing me and having me as your guest. Thank you very much. You enjoy the rest of Malice. Thank you. I will because I have no more obligations. Oh. <laughs> We are here with the wonderful Desmond Ryan, and he writes the Wait, Mike Mar O'Shea and Mary Margaret O'Shea series. Oh, they changed the Mary Margaret O'Shea series to be called Pint of Trouble series. Pint of Trouble? Yes. Very good. Okay, yes. that's kind of descriptive. Were you, this is your first mouse. Yes, Give it me is. your... Oh, it's fantastic. First of all, it's great to be around people again after that oh, yes. three-year hiatus. As you know, it's a fantastic group of people meeting so many great writers and everybody's so friendly and accessible and just great. We told you to come to Malice, yep, didn't you we? you were right. Yep. That's good. Now, tell us a little bit about your mysteries. Well, as you know, because you also told me, I started with the Mike O'Shea series, and as you know, I put in his mother, yes. Mary Margaret O'Shea, uh, because the Mike O'Shea is a police procedural. It was getting a little heavy, a little bit dark. Put in his mom just for a little bit of levity. By book three, she was taking over the series, so you had said, I think, in about book two that she should have she her own series. She needed her own space. Yes, and so by book three, I had to agree with you, and that's why we now have Pint of Trouble, and I believe the first book is coming out in August. But I could be wrong. I believe now, is this a re-release of the first book in the series that you wrote? The uh, Mike books, the Mike O'Shea books are already being re-released. 1033 and The Funeral have been released as one with Level Best, and that was a couple of months ago. And then, and then Man at the Door. Man at the Door is the third book. So Death Before Coffee is the second Mike book. That is being released anytime now. Good. And then Man at the Door is being released, I think, also in August. And then Level Best expects some actual new Mike books because there's three more in that story arc. So I think oh. after they re-release the ones that are already out there, I believe that the uh, publishing schedule after that is one Mike book a year. So for the next two or three years, there's going to be a, a new Mike O'Shea book. Good. And then the Mary Margarets are a book a year for the next five years. I am so happy for you because I know you were doing it on your own up in Canada. Yes, yeah. This is lovely. Let somebody else do all the worrying. That's right. Well, you can worry a little. <laughs> well, Desmond, it was so much fun having you here and putting a face that doesn't have a microphone in front of it. <laughs> yes. And this is the thing. I mean, get to actually meet the people, people that you speak with. Flesh. Because we have been talking to each other for five years now. Exactly. So you were is... on one of our earliest episodes. And yeah. you, I think you found us, didn't you? you? Yes. You sent us a note. Yes. I'm an author. And here, here you are, are today, five years later. And yeah. yeah. Still going strong. As are you. We're very happy for you. Thank you very much. Okay, and thanks for stopping by. You're more than welcome. I would like to introduce Olivia Black. She has stopped by to talk about her books. How are you, Olivia? Hi, I'm doing great. I'm really enjoying Malice this year. There is some fantastic authors here. Yes. As always. <laughs> is this your first year? No, this is my second year as a published author. But I used to come as a reader and a fan, and I still come as a fan and a reader. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. I mean, we come as the press, but we are in awe the whole entire time. Look at that. Look who's here. Oh, yes. <laughs> and everybody is so fantastic to talk to. Like, e even if you've got to, like, 
wait your turn because everybody wants to talk to them. They will. Everybody wait is, for is you. gracious and they're sweet and they're fantastic. And these are people I've been fans of sometimes for six months, sometimes for 60 years. <laughs> I, know. Like, ah! <laughs> I know, I know. So tell us about your book. So right now I am working on the Record Shop Mysteries, and it starts with Vinyl Resting Place, which is out in stores now. Uh, the second book is A Fatal Groove. It comes out in July. And these stories follow three sisters who live in a little town outside of Austin, Texas, and they have reopened their grandparents' vinyl record shop. Oh. And they also serve coffee. Oh, okay. So they've got a little coffee Shame nook. There's to not get... any of those around. I would love to find one like that. Can you it's... imagine just sitting at a table, you're drinking coffee, you're listening to records, you're oh, listening to music, yeah. and then you kind of got to browse, and it's a two story. Nice. I, I assume this is a contemporary. <laughs> yes, right? it is a contemporary. And it's got kind of and a cozy, culinary. Correct? It's definitely cozy. Okay. Sorry, contemporary cozy mystery. It's got a little bit of a culinary angle because of the coffee, but primarily it's about the music and it's about the sisters and their relationship. Nice. And it's great because there's three of them. So whenever a murder happens, maybe one of them is involved and the other two are helping, or maybe all three of them have different suspects in mind uh -huh. and they all want to go different directions. They do work together a lot, which is great because you don't have a sleuth that's walking into the haunted house at midnight to confront the killer all by yourself. Um, all of them are very good about telling their sisters, hey, I'm going to go into the haunted house tonight. And the other <laughs> sisters go, well, we're coming with you. Yeah, that's nice. Now, who are you published with? So I am published with St. Martin's Paperbacks. Oh, okay. And this is originally a three-book series. Hopefully it continues, and there's like 900 books in the series eventually. <laughs> right now there is three. Uh, the third book is coming out next spring. I believe it's up for pre-order, so I can tell you the name. It is Rhythm and Clues. Oh, see, I love the pun. <laughs> now, do you come up with them? I come up with a lot of them. I do get help. Um, my agent is very punny. My editor is very punny. Vinyl Resting Place was mine. Rhythm and Clues was mine, but the tagline is all my agents, and it's the rhythm is going to get you. Oh, my <laughs> gosh, that's perfect. And it always gets stuck in your head. Like, I swear, a week from now, you're going to be doing something. You're going to be doing laundry, or is, you're, going you're going to be driving it. to work, and you're going to start humming it, and you won't know. And it's all my fault. It's, it's actually all James's fault. So oh, okay. Okay. Um, but I, I love the puns. I really lean into the puns. And in fact, because I've got a music shop that also sells coffee, I've come up with music-themed coffee drinks. And there's a different coffee ah. special of the day. And it always has a musical pun as a name. So one of the ones I really love, Junie is my main character. She has a date with her ex uh -huh. coming on that night. Uh, and her ex is this guy named Beauregard Russell. And he's, oh, he's just trouble in a cowboy hat. <laughs> and so Junie has a date with her ex in the evening. So they decided that the drink that they're going to serve that day as the special is all my espressos live in Texas. Love it. Love it. <laughs> so I love lean it. into the pun. Yeah. The pun. <laughs> You've got to. You've got to. And a couple of months ago, I had a couple of people that were DMing me and saying, oh, I've got a great copy idea for you. And I'm like, you know what? I have some really smart readers and I have some really smart friends. So I put out a contest. It was like, name that coffee. I'll pick the best name and I'll put it on my next book. And I got so many great <laughs> suggestions. So you've got them all stockpiled. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I picked like five or six to go in book three. Three different people suggested coffee drinks I'd used in book two. So I just gave them credit in book two. Yeah. yeah. I, I just finished the acknowledgments and it was going to press. And I'm like, hold on, hold on. Well, I got to add something in the acknowledgements. That's great. So right. Give everybody full credit in the acknowledgments. But it's having that kind of support and that kind of input from readers and yeah. other writers and from friends really makes it fun and oh yeah cozies now, are all about community so having community input oh, yeah definitely when i read cozies yes i'm there for the mystery but i'm also there because i want to find out what bob's doing next or something because yes. they're become like friends so i love that 
Now, can you tell our listeners where they can find you and your books? So uh, you can find me online, oliviablack.com. That's B-L-A-C-K-E.com. And from my website, I have links to all of my socials. I have a form for my newsletter, and there is also a contact me form that will email me directly. And I've finally figured out how to get it to not go to spam. So if you've tried to email me in the past, they didn't respond. It probably we went to spam. <laughs> um, yeah, and I'd spell out all my other socials, but I was not very smart when we first started. And I had Olivia Black author and Olivia Black and author Olivia Black all over the different social platforms, and I can't even keep them straight. <laughs> my website is the best place because you can also sign up for the newsletter. Yeah. You never know what social media is going to be gone tomorrow yes. when you log in. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Olivia, for stopping by. And I look forward to checking out your books. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. We are here with the lovely Sue Anger. And she is going to tell us about her visit to Malice. Okay. Well, this is my first time to Malice. Oh, really? Yes. Yes. I've been to Boucher Con. She's a virgin. I am. <laughs> I'm a newbie. Not any longer. She's here. <laughs> <laughs> I came out with my first book. I'm not exactly sure when. Amazon kind of said, you know, here we go. Uh, but it was around October 2022. Mm -hmm. So it's set in my hometown of Beaufort. North Carolina, as opposed to Beaufort, oh. South Carolina. Beaufort's oh, did they get? Oh, yeah. Did people get them? Mixed oh my up? goodness! So Beaufort's much smaller. It's been unfortunately discovered, but its regular population is under ten thousand. But during the weekends, it's about thirty, forty thousand. Oh, yeah. Now you're not from North Carolina. I am, and I'm not. I was born in Michigan, and my yeah. my family was That's from where that accent's yeah. from. And my family was from New England, so I don't even really have a Midwest accent. We came to Beaufort when I was about ten, and I ended up in Raleigh because I needed a job. But they had a very distinct accent in Beaufort. The toy was so hoy. There were hogfish in the color sand. <laughs> Let me repeat this because these guys cracked up so much. In the toy was so hoy. There were hogfish in the color sand. <laughs> so translate, it's it's a very, very bizarre accent. A brogue. Oh, it's it's, it's uh, Scottish and Southern. The, the tide was so high, there were hogfish in the collar. <laughs> <laughs> And then they always say sin at the end, son, sin. <laughs> yeah. So that was that was my uh, childhood and adolescence. Yeah. So. No wonder you yeah. didn't pick up that act. <laughs> now, can you give us a little elevator pitch of your your series and or book? Well, yeah, it's not a very good one, but um, <laughs> young Jake Parson, he's a World War One veteran, and he sails into Beaufort from South Carolina to meet up with his brother. And he gets to port and he learns his brother has been lost at sea. So since it's 1923, I guess I forgot to mention it. Um, <laughs> it's during Prohibition. He did the only thing you can do is he went out, he took his boat back out to the harbor and he got drunk, got wasted, passed out that night. And the next morning, his brother's dog is on the dock. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> so his brother would never have sailed without his dog, dog right. whose name was Yog. Yog. The dog Yog. named the dog. Yog. <laughs> <laughs> and that's based on a true dog person or whatever. Oh, <laughs> Very good. Well, that sounds fascinating because did you get your inspiration from a true story or no I had realized kind of after college so much of that accent mm -hmm. and that culture were dying we're at ground zero with climate change massive exactly. flooding hurricanes yes and you know I'm not optimistic I hate to say that but <laughs> in addition to that in addition to that like I mean, what I feared has come to pass. Beaufort, you know, on this center probably has 5,000 people, 5,000 homes, give or take. When I was a kid, 
you could buy a home for 14000 right. in, in the 70s. The school teachers lived in town. The waiters lived in town. And now the homes start at about a million. Well, also during the pandemic, see, all these people came down. They could work from home, so they wanted yeah. to live in Beaufort. And it's a very walkable town. Yeah. I, I'm sure I'm publicizing it now that I'm yeah, talking about it. Yeah, you're going to get more people but, now. Um, I oh, start... it's horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> yeah. Don't come. Don't, don't, don't come. Don't, we got so many hurricanes. Right? But I was doing oral histories, and I was doing them with video, and I was recording them. And, you know, I loved these stories, you know, about the Manhattan and things like that. And then one day I was just, I don't know if bored's the word, but... When I was taking care of my kids, as so many moms and authors do here, and, you know, they're down for the nap, and you just start writing. And I wrote this little short story, and I said, oh, I like these characters. I want to go with them. But I already knew a lot about Prohibition. I had these wonderful bootlegging stories. Now, most of it was really moonshining, but I didn't want to write about that. I wanted more of the rum smuggling. And just for your viewers who don't know, it's in such an amazing area. It's right below Cape Hatteras which is considered the graveyard of the Atlantic because yes. it's so shallow. And we had so many boats coming up from the Caribbean and also down from the, the Hebrides. We think yeah. a lot of the accent yeah. is from the Hebrides. So this was one of the best bootlegging stories. The revenue men were the men that were hired to enforce the prohibition right. rules, the laws on land. And they weren't very well trained. They were just sort of thugs. So for bait... They let everyone know that this massive barrel of whiskey was on the end of a dock, and they, it was just sitting there. Like, boy, yeah. are you stupid, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so in the middle of the night, one of my friend's fathers and you know, a couple of his friends, they got a wash tub, and they got in a skiff, and they caught the tide just right, like when it was just below the dock, and they went right underneath where the barrel was, and then they drilled through the oh. dock, oh. drilled through the barrel. <laughs> All that precious. And it was whiskey. empty. Yeah. Oh, they got it in the wash tub. Yeah, they yeah. had a party. They had a good time. <laughs> yeah. They had, they had a party. Isn't that a great that, story? So that's so. a great story. We're so don't to... come to Beaufort. <laughs> yeah. Don't ever go to Beaufort. It gets really don't crowded. Don't go to Beaufort. Beaufort's <laughs> beautiful. I have a friend that lives up here. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty big town, right? Yeah. I think I've been through it once. Beaufort's yeah. much. Beaufort's on a small peninsula, and then the peninsula goes out, they call it down east. And in the time that I was writing, there was barely even a road. People would get around by little boats and stuff. Thank um, you, Sue. Oh, okay. We Thank appreciate you for you stopping by. And- oh, you guys are the best. And we are here with the lovely Vicki Delaney, a friend of the show. She's yeah. been on before. Welcome, Vicki. And nice to talk to you. It is so nice to meet in person. Yes, yes. 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 Um, how many years have you gone to Maui? I, somebody asked me that, and I was trying to remember. Probably been 15, at least 17, maybe, something around yeah. that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So it's and, just. And uh, how much has it changed over the years? The hotel, has, the, the venue has changed couple of times the hotel and that mm-hmm. the conference i don't think has changed all that much oh, it's, it's um good. still a lot of nice turnover to people see all those familiar faces and then there's new people to meet and that's that's always great and yeah. i didn't come last year so that means this is my first time in four years so oh really, yeah because of covid we yeah. were then there's three years no what yeah. of COVID. Yeah. so um it's really nice just to see all those uh, familiar yeah. faces again such yeah. as your own yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you so what are you working on what am i working on um right now i'm writing the next year so that would be 2024 lighthouse library book okay. that i write under my pen name of eva gates and it's about art theft and art fraud. Oh. So Ooh. something a little little different. I've kind of gotten into the larger world for that. So oh, that's kind of nice. It. And the next book in that series, which comes out, will be out in June. And it's called uh, Death Knells and Wedding Bells. Ooh. Ah, sounds good. Sounds yeah. good. Now, um, you're, you're from Canada. Right. And, um, and um, do your series take place in Canada? or Not the ones I'm writing right now. When I first started writing um, Low these many years ago, I wrote a police detective series set in small town British Columbia. And I wrote a couple of standalones set in Ontario, where I live. 
Um, now I'm writing cozy, so I'm writing four cozy series. They're all set somewhere in the U.S. Okay. And tell our listeners what your other cozy okay, series. Okay, so I write the Lighthouse Library series under the pen name of Eva Gates. I write the Tea by the Sea mysteries, Vicki mm. Delaney. The year-round Christmas series, also Vicki Delaney, and the Sherlock Holmes bookshop series. That's my that's favorite. My favorite. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite. The eighth one of that is out now, and it's called The Game is a Footnote, and the next one will be out, which is The Sign of Four Spirits, will be out next January. Oh, And now, do you good. write your series consecutively, or do you finish one and... and I, uh... I finish one completely. Like I don't intermingle them. Now I, I'll get edits back, for example, from the editor for something. And it's, a, you know, you have to have that within within a week or two. So I will stop what I'm working on and then do all that. But in terms of writing the book, Apple, one, start to finish. Yeah. So, yeah, it helps me, I think, to keep the voices separate. Oh, I would need yeah. that. I'd have characters doing things that they, oh, that's not supposed to be in there. And are they all with the same publisher? No, I'm with uh, Crook Lane and Kensington now. Oh, okay. yeah. oh, very good. Very nice. Well, Vicki, it was lovely talking to you. It was and to uh, we are some of your biggest fans. We That Sherlock series, oh, it's it's chef kiss. Right. <laughs> yeah. I enjoy that. that. I like the tea by the sea also. That's great. Did so. you get some? I was handing one out at the Kensington Dining. They're all gone. Oh, we, were we weren't up away. there. Yeah, we didn't get, we up, didn't get there. up there. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's lovely talking to you as always, so thank you. All yes, right. thank, thank you. you. And enjoy the rest of Malice. I intend to. I hope you enjoyed these pop-up interviews as much as we did. They were a lot of fun to record. Next week, we will give our impressions of Malice and announce the winners.